a gracious good day once again. Tis I, Norton the First by grace of God, Emperor of the United States and Protector of Mexico, back at you with episode number 44 of Emperor Norton's Fantastic History Vlog. Today is May 14, 2020. Uh, just a few notes before we get moving into the day's events. I don't know if you've noticed in the last couple of days the immense technical improvements to this vlog. We now have picture in picture and better sound. Uh, there'll be more coming out, more effects soon. So uh, if you have friends that have not seen this vlog before, please let them know. We'd really like to see this catch on, especially as we are approaching episode 50. We'd like to see a big big increase in viewership, so let everyone know, social media accounts just here, uh, spread the word. So uh, let's move on to today's history. Once again, we are reading from John Ralston's book, This Day in San Francisco. And on May 14, 1856, James Casey shot James King of William. In early San Francisco's rough and tumble business climate, banking houses opened and failed regularly. One failed banker was James King, who had affected the name James King of William after his father's name in his eastern hometown to distinguish himself from other James Kings. After his bank closed in 1855, King began the San Francisco Evening Bulletin as his personal platform. Uh, the bulletin was vitriolic, it attacked gambling, prostitution, corrupt judges, the Broderick Democratic machine, Broderick himself, his henchmen. In his editorials, King particularly dared his targets to retaliate physically. On Wednesday, May 14th, the Bulletin accused Supervisor James Casey of stuffing ballot boxes to get elected, which King, with Casey, which Casey almost certainly had done, and as if that wasn't dangerous enough, King printed that Casey had done prison time. About 4 p.m. that afternoon, Casey, mad with rage, confronted King at the Bulletin office on Montgomery Street in a vicious argument heard down the hall. Casey demanded what King meant by printing that Casey had been a prison inmate. Is that true? asked King. That is not the question. I don't wish my past acts raked up. On that point, I am sensitive, he said. Are you done, asked King. There's the door, go. Never show your face here again. Uh, Casey, who ran his own paper, said he would retaliate in print. King said he wouldn't notice. If necessary, I shall defend myself, said Casey, as he stormed out. About 5 p.m., King left his office for dinner. He went north on Montgomery, by the Montgomery block toward Washington and crossed diagonally, Casey was waiting. As King approached, Casey drew a pistol. Witnesses said he challenged King and then fired, hitting King below the right clavicle. King staggered into the Pacific Express office on Montgomery and collapsed on a chair. Several doctors arrived shortly. Supporters of Casey's hurried him to city jail on Broadway, which was guarded by, mounted, uh, by a mounted battalion. The Pacific, the Pacific Express office was cordoned off to all but medical men. A second committee of vigilance, the first that organized in 1851, met on Thursday morning. It would comprise over 3,000 men armed and drilled, ready to remove Casey from jail forcibly. And of course, King would die. The second vigilance committee did haul him out of jail, and he was later hanged at Fort Gunnybags. Uh, look into that story some more. There's a lot more to that, uh, especially about Casey and the person who was hanged with him. Uh, the interesting stories. Well, let's get on to today's other highlights. On this date in 1817, 1787, delegates gathered in Philadelphia to draw up the U.S. Constitution. In 1796, English country doctor Edward Jenner administers the first inoculation against smallpox. We've been arguing that one ever since. 1804, Mary Ever Lewis, Mary Weather Lewis and William Clark's expedition, commissioned by President Thomas Jefferson, sets out from St. Louis for the Pacific Coast. 1878, Vaseline, 
is granted a patent, and that's U.S. patent number 127,568. 1903, President Theodore Roosevelt continues his visit to San Francisco and dedicates the Dewey Monument. 1932, the We Want Beer Parade in New York City. Jimmy Walker, then the mayor of New York City, organized a day-long Beer for Taxation Parade, later known as the We Want Beer Parade, in objection to the 18th Amendment, which prohibited the manufacture, sale, transport, import, or export of alcoholic beverages. An estimated 100,000 people attended, quote, the parade will furnish the best count of noses I can think of much better than the passing of resolutions or the writing of letters to representatives in Congress, Walker told the New York Times. He argued that repeal, which finally came on December 5th, 1933, would aid in balancing the federal budget as well as relieving the unemployment crisis. Of course, that story would be of particular interest to members of the ancient and honorable order of E. Clampus Vitus. What say the brethren? On this date in 1935, Los Angeles' Griffith Planetarium opened, making it the third in the U.S. 1944, Generals Rommel, Speedo, and von Stupetnigel attempt to assassinate Hitler. 1949, U.S. President Harry Truman signs a bill establishing a rocket test range at Cape Canaveral. 1951, the Ernie Kovacs show uh, premiered on NBC. A great funny man. If you've never seen his bits, look him up. He's amazing and kind of forgotten, unfortunately. It was this date in 1961 of the bus with the first group of Freedom Riders was bombed and burned in Alabama. 1973, the launch of Skylab, the first space station. 1991, the world's largest burrito was created at 1,126 pounds. Wow. 1998, the sitcom Seinfeld aired its final episode on NBC to 76.3 million viewers. Commercials were priced at $2 million for 30 seconds. Well, let's get into the births today. 1868, Magnus Hirschfeld, the German physician and gay rights advocate, was born in Prussia and, ironically, died on the same day at the age of 67 of a heart attack. Uh, that would be, uh, I can't do the math, but it's, I think it's about 1935, yes indeed. Uh, 1922, the birth date of Richard Deacon, who you might remember from his role as Mel Cooley in the Dick Van Dyke Show. 1923, photographer Deanne Arbus, 1936, Bobby Darin, My Way Across the Sea. No, he didn't say My Way. That was someone else we're going to talk about in a moment. He was, he was and it was beyond the sea. I'll get this right yet. Uh, 1944, birth date of George Lucas, Live Long and Prosper. 1952, another filmmaker, Robert Zemeckis. 1952, uh, singer, songwriter, talking heads, Ed, David Byrne. 1966, Fab Morvan, now that's a name you might not remember, uh, but you might if you remember the Millie Vanilli scandal, look it up. 1971, Sofia Coppola, filmmaker, and 1984, birthday of Mark Zuckerberg, the head of Facebook, which we use as one of our social media outlets. Deaths on this day, 1912, playwright August Strindberg, 1919, Henry J. Hines of the Hines Corporation, 57 varieties. 1970, Billy Burke, a name you might not remember. Of course, she was the wife of Flo Ziegfeld, but also uh, Glyn the Good Witch in The Wizard of Oz. Uh, 1982, Hugh Beaumont, Leave it to Beaver. 1987, actress Rita Hayworth. 1998, Frank Sinatra. He did it his way. 2003, Robert Stack. 2015, guitarist and singer, bluesmeister, B.B. King. 2018, writer Tom Wolfe. And 2019, we said goodbye 
to a cat named Tartar Sauce, but you might remember better as Grumpy Cat. Well, that wraps it up for today. Until we meet again, stay safe, stay healthy, stay inside. If you go outside, wear a mask, be kind to each other. We wish, wish you a gracious good day.